Hello and welcome into the StarCast Dark Mark Studios. Along with Christian and James, I am Ryan. We are the official Dallas Stars podcast of the Hockey Podcast Network, and we are brought to you by DraftKings. Make sure you use that promo code THPN the next time you go and use their app for a special little something something. How are you that guys doing? A, that was a smooth intro. I'm very yeah. proud. I know. It, it, it's only taken me over a year to finally figure it out, right? Yeah, we've nailed it now, though. Yeah, I think how many times have I said like, uh, "This is uh, along with Ryan." This is Chris. How many times have I said that? Like, At two least or three 50. times. Yeah. Oh, you man! Wow. Yeah. Rude. Okay. Anyways, uh, how you guys doing? How you doing, Chris? Doing okay? I'm doing great. I'm so happy with the Windows 11. Windows 11 came out literally yesterday, and I downloaded it last night. I've been playing with it ever since, and it's amazing. I love it. Computer nerd. Computer nerd, yes. yes. Computer nerd. Hey, James, how you doing? I'm doing good. I have not downloaded the Windows 11. That's it. Yeah, you I, have to. <laughs> you know, I would have expected you to do it first before Christian. That, honestly, James. I was surprised that James hadn't done it yet. Yeah, I'm pretty know, lazy I'm like, when it comes to updates. Yeah. Speaking of updates, I still haven't updated my phone. I, I'm still on uh, an XR, I think is what it is, an iPhone XR, and like the 13's fixing to come out. So I don't know. Maybe I'm a little bit behind. No, they Anyways, guys. Anything since the XR, anyway. So yeah. So I forgot to mention this last week, Chris, but I got to pick a bone with you, and I'm sorry, I got to make fun of you a little bit. How Which about bone? how about the Aggies against Arkansas? How great were they, right? <sighs> But you that's not even the Sorry. bad one. That's Sorry. not even the bad one. The bad one is Mississippi State. That's the bad one. I know, that, man. That's why I'm talking about Windows 11 now and not the yeah, Aggies. I know, right? And you're like, so, expect a weekly update from me, and then they lost to so, Arkansas, and we didn't even mention it last yeah, week. Yeah, I'm a Fairweather fan, so, yeah. <laughs> I'm done. So I'm still watching the games and stuff. Like, I'm going to the game, the, the Bama game. We're playing Bama this week, too. So Yeah, good luck with that. We're about to be we're about to be three and three, after going three and zero. Oh. After going three and zero, oh. yeah, and yeah, yeah. It, is is y'all's uh, main quarterback still hurt? Oh yeah, yeah. He he he's 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 not good. He's out until like I think three more weeks or four more weeks. So goodness not gracious. Good. Well, you know, speaking of injuries, uh, I don't know if y'all saw it tonight, but did y'all see that really wicked injury to uh, Ryan Reeves? I did. PKC yeah, that it looks like it hurt. What Ooh. a piece of garbage. Yeah. But if, you know what? It's a piece of garbage doing it to a piece of garbage. So, like, yeah, pretty trashy. Well, but, well you PK know, Subban, like, win, PK win either Subban, way. I know he doesn't, he's not very popular around the league, but at least he, at least he's, well, I say at least he's good. He At least he used to be good, right? And at least yeah, he banks. He, was he good, makes nine million dollars. But, but he tonight he even showed he he kept it consistent where he does some stupid garbage and he doesn't answer the bell and refuses to fight when he needs to. Like he, he's just a pansy. Like he goes around and he does crap like that and then he doesn't answer the bell. Like okay, but what I mean, Roos used to do that. No, Roos would yeah, fight if, if, yeah, he, no, if he, he did not something. All the time. No. Roos, what he would do is he would try and draw penalties if he did something that he needed to fight for he would fight and he and he would he would get beat up and he would okay, take it like a man that's true that is Subban part... does not do that he is and, a piece and... of garbage he's the the thing between him and ben all the time that's happened so yeah i think suban is just a, a pansy of a player um and for those of you that don't recognize the roost that's aka antoine roussel uh, who is now with the arizona coyotes that is so weird to think Still, it's, it's, it was weird to see him in a Vancouver jersey, but, you know, he'd been there for a while, so I got used to it, and now he got traded to Arizona. That's just beyond funky uh, for me to look at that. So, um, Anyways, guys, uh, why don't we just go ahead and jump right on into this, and uh, let's just mention a couple of the topics we're going to talk about tonight. Um, of course, we're going to talk about goaltending because, you know, it's a Dallas Stars podcast and we still don't know who's going to be the number one. That's the only thing we can talk so, about, I guess. <laughs> and and uh, so we're going to talk about the goaltending. We'll talk about something that I forgot to put on the podcast uh, last week. And uh, one of our loyal listeners, uh, AJ, uh, he sent this to me and I forgot to put it on the, the, the list last week. So I put it on this week. It's about the helmet sponsors for the, the Stars this season. And I mean, we can talk about the ad stuff if y'all want to, but... Uh, we'll just kind of briefly mention that. 
Um, we'll get into the training camp roster. There's some surprises on it, in in my opinion. I'm a little shocked. You know that if you had told me some of the players that are still on it, I would have said that you're crazy. Um, and then uh, we'll talk about, of course, the the hockey world is talking about Robin Leonard right now, so we're, we got to at least mention him for a split second. And then uh, w- one of the big news that I want to mention, good news for Vancouver, is they signed their two restricted free agents. So we'll get into that a little bit as oh, well. Gosh. Um, and uh, one other thing before we get into the Who Cares segment, we'll mention uh, Rope Hints again because, uh, you know, we still haven't seen him. So that's is, is that cause for concern? Should we be worried? Uh, we'll get into that as well. Um, but first off, let's just start off with the whole uh, – uh, Goodness gracious, it's Robin Leonard kind of woke up one day and chose violence. <laughs> so he goes on this like epic rampage on Twitter and just, you know, throws some names out there. He mentions uh, obviously Jack Eichel and uh, Jack Eichel's situation going on in Buffalo and uh, also the, the fact that, that apparently Nolan Patrick was getting – uh, medicine from uh, Elaine Vigneault, who is the head coach of the Philadelphia Flyers. Now, Nolan Patrick is over in uh, Vegas, of course. But uh, that that's just some of the tweets that he sent. And uh, d- did y'all get a chance to go through and, and look at some of the tweets at all? Uh, what's some of your thoughts? Uh, is he crazy? Or is, do you view him as crazy? Or is this something good that he's speaking out? How, how do y'all feel on this? Yeah, I saw some of his tweets. Uh, I don't know. It kind of felt like he was yelling at a cloud. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I can imagine that's like a perfect uh that's like a perfect visual for me right now i can just imagine robin leonard rah, 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 yeah. rah, rah, like i love leonard saying. that he says all this stuff and he doesn't give a crap about what other people think and he's good enough to do it too but like i don't know man come on i did not see the tweets but i listened to the little press conference thing that he had that where they talked about it a little bit and it it seemed like something that was really bothering him personally, so I can see why he would he would have done it. But yeah, this is definitely a little crazy the way he did it. Okay, so this is what I'm just gonna mention one of the first little. Uh, just I'll just pick one of the tweets. Um, I don't know. There there's so many. Um, okay, so this one is specifically about uh, Eichel, okay? So this, so he says, Sabres fans, we didn't love each other much, which, geez, I, I can't imagine a hockey player coming out and even saying that, uh, was warranted against me, some were not. So he even mentioned the fact that, you know, some of the hate he was receiving was deserved. And, you know, that's that's big of an NHL player to, to mention that, especially on, on social media. Um, did my best, but I respect your passion for the franchise. The situation with your captain, who was mine, should be as big of a problem for you as for me. I know your hearts are in the right place. So, uh, that, I mean, that's one of the, the, the easier, you know, lesser tweets that have been going on. But, I mean, he goes on to, he talks about uh, Eichel a little bit, and then he talks about his own treatment when he was in... Uh, when he was in Buffalo, this is another one. They screwed my ankle big time, then surgery, and then pills. No care, almost died. But eh, after forcing leg press after a few weeks, after bad high ankle sprain first game. That is foot after treatment. Later is my soul gone after a month after surgery. It's all. It's not all pretty. So, and he's got in a, a picture that accompanies that tweet, and it looks bad. So it, it, it there's all that situation again about, you know, can can you actually trust team doctors to actually look out for you? And I think he's trying to put some doubt into the minds of some uh, NHL players. It, 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 well, and we didn't even mention the one that I thought was big was talking about giving players Ambien and stuff on the planes just to make them sleep. Like. Right. That, I think that's the, the Philadelphia Flyers thing, I think. If I remember correctly, like, are they like forcing pills down people's throats? Like, because that's what he makes it sound like. Well, it, I don't think he meant to make it sound like that, but he did sit mention that, hey, they're giving prescription 
pills to players who are not prescribed these pills. So, uh, it, uh, so this is the one I think is what you're talking about, Chris. Uh, is it common for workplaces to give out benzodiazepines or wh- I don't have how yeah, to pronounce that to employees that. when they travel in Ambien? Should that n- not be done by doctors or psychiatrists? Asking for a friend, and he it does the little eyes. This doesn't happen in Vegas, to be clear, but I know many other teams. I also been in on teams that do, and then in uh, uh you know in the same thread he mentions Philadelphia Flyers, and specifically Elaine Vigneault. So um, he w- he eventually did backtrack on that a little bit and and say you know uh, that he he wasn't for sure about that or whatever. So uh, is, is this a good thing? for a player like this to to speak out or is this seem just like like a, like you were saying chris just like a crazy man yelling at a cloud i mean it's good that there are players like this so if there is actually a situation that needs to be talked about that someone can but like all this stuff like obviously the the team doctors thing is an issue but i feel like that's a one franchise issue with buffalo and if that's the case they're gonna get what they're gonna get what is coming to them in the shape of people not wanting to go to buffalo so they already and, don't exactly <laughs> despite the whole despite the whole uh yeah this whole know, team doctors the, thing this whole eichel thing is not just about eichel it's gonna impact the buffaloes for however long their front office stays the same and all that too so i don't think that's really a nhl wide big deal that needs to be addressed i think that's more so a individual franchise stuff and like the sleeping pill stuff i guarantee that is widely exaggerated like they're probably offering people sleeping pills on the planes whenever they have a back-to-back game and they gotta fly to a place so well but technically that's technically that's illegal you can't do that without a prescription for that specific he said ambient i don't know if i believe that i think they got normal over-the-counter sleeping pills. <laughs> so. Well, and, and he's also saying he's got proof to all this too. So where is it? I, I, exactly. That's that's <laughs> that is it. That was my thought too. Is like exactly okay. If this is exa- if this is what's happening, you got to not just say it, but show us the proof. Okay. And if that's the case, and put I it on think, Twitter. I think yeah. I think that's a big problem of why it's wrong the way he did it. Because if he has proof about it, he doesn't want to expose that and expose the whole league that he. He says that he like he enjoys playing in the NHL, like in in the press conference afterwards. But it it just like it's he put himself in a bad situation by saying it on Twitter. Well, and just like with all with it being a whole strain over like a short period of time, it's like he just got bored and he just wanted to talk about everything. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what, what is he trying to accomplish here? It doesn't. It seems like he wants one guy to get fired, and he's mad at doctors. But then he okay. goes on. <laughs> and but then he, says, he goes oh, on. Doctors are great, and I love right. Vegas. And what? <laughs> well, and then he goes on to say, uh, uh, "Oh shoot, um, I lost my train of thought there." Uh, he goes on to say that he loves the NHL. And he wants the NHL to be successful and stuff like that. And I'm like, exactly. "But you're gonna you're gonna down the league that that pays you five million dollars a year?" And and I still don't know how I feel about this because. I love the. I'm kind of with you, Chris. I love the fact that there's a player out there that's willing to to talk about stuff like that, and you know, it's not taboo. You know, you get the typical interviews, you know, at at, at post game, and yeah, we just didn't get the pucks deep enough, and we didn't shoot enough pucks to score, and stuff like that. But with Robin Leonard, what I love about him is that you get something different from him, and he's he's really not. He 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 doesn't give her a rat's butt about anything that. Uh, that he says if it's controversial or whatnot and uh i i kind of like that in this case i think it backfired on him a little bit in in this particular case well it didn't really backfire it just didn't go anywhere like it doesn't hurt him like everybody in the nhl knows he's a crazy dude so it's just like okay robin leonard said something crazy well i wouldn't call him crazy because he, he he's dealt with some mental health stuff but um what, what i will say is I didn't mean like that. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I, I, I'm just clarifying so people don't construe you the wrong way and go after you on Twitter and stuff like that because they do, believe it or not. Um, but the the one good thing that did come out of this is it seemed like 
because the NHL did reach out to Robin Leonard, and they did have a conversation with him, and they even made a uh, like a press release on NHL.com about it. And it seemed like he had a really good conversation, not just with the NHL, but with also the NHLPA. And the coming out of the out of that meeting, a couple of the things that stuck out to me that he said is one, he's mostly looking out for younger players, which that's great. Uh, great. Okay, that probably should have been something you would have you should have mentioned when you were ranting on Twitter. He's like, you know, I'm just trying to look out for the younger guys because I think at this point Robin Leonard is in his late 20s, 27, 28, something like that. And uh, the the second thing that came out of this is that he acknowledged that the way he did it publicly is not the right way to do it, even though it, it was kind of fun to <laughs> to watch it come out on Twitter. He, they, he came out of that meeting, you know, understanding that the most effective way to take care of the situations and the, the, the things he wants to be fixed within the NHL, it needs to be done in more of a private manner. Mm, and I, I don't know if I agree with that fully. Cause like if what he's saying is, is really true, like all doctors, then we need to the know NHL about it. Right. It, then yeah. yeah. Then, mm-hmm. then, then yeah, definitely make it public. But like, that's the thing is I don't know if what he's saying or the picture that he's painting is the full picture. It obviously isn't, but I think he's painting a very specific part that he wants to show, and that's not really the way most of the NHL works. So um, it, it, it's just a weird news story, right? It, it, it's just kind of like some good things came out of it. You know, some things he probably shouldn't have done came out of it. He did get an audience with the NHL and the NHLPA, though. Man, maybe that's just what he wanted to to begin with, um, but I don't understand why you couldn't just, you know, reach out and say, hey, can we talk about some issues? Um, so uh, we'll, we'll see how this goes and see if there's anything else that comes out of this. I, I wouldn't expect anything else based off of his comments about the whole, you know, doing it private matter, but uh, we'll see. Maybe he there's something he just can't stand and he'll he'll tweet about it again, so... Anyways, I just thought that was really interesting. Um, okay, uh, next little thing we want to talk about before we get into some star stuff is that uh, there are were three big RFAs that were still remaining, and two of them were belonged to Vancouver, and now we can officially say that both of the RFAs from Vancouver are signed. Quinn Hughes signed for six years at $7.85 million, and then Elias Pettersson signed for three years at $7.35 million. So very close in uh, the amount of money they're both being paid it's a it's a good payday for both uh i honestly think that uh hughes could have gotten a little bit more so i think he uh he, he definitely you know took a pay cut a little bit especially based off of you know i would put him up there with importance of how how important he is to the vancouver canucks like how we view hayskinen for the stars Absolutely. He, he's he's not necessarily up to that uh, level defensively that Haskinen is, but I think Hughes has a more offensive output right now, at least. Yeah. So I, I think that's a great. I mean, I mean, we talked and we make fun of Benning for the past, you know, couple of years and everything, but so far this off season, he's he's done pretty well, including uh, these two contracts. The, these two contracts. These are two excellent. contracts, he did very good. The 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 Pedersen one, it, it's a it's a good deal. Seven is. A, a pretty pretty team friendly i mean it's not amazing but it's 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 good uh, but the hughes deal it seems like they met in the middle somewhere for with, yeah. with Pedersen. but the hughes deal is amazing i don't know how he worked that out but i, I was expecting eight and a I, half i was plus. expecting eight and a half and yeah so that's a really good deal i think for for hughes and that could be big for them if uh oel works out but it won't so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> so you are so 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 down on that. It'll be a good still. contract to trade later on, I guess. Um. So, <laughs> I I still think that Benning has done an okay job this off season. But if I, okay, OEL can you at, can, all right? All right, hold on, yes, Chris. Hold on. Can you at least mention or agree with me that this off season for the Canucks was way better than previous off seasons? Then last off season, sure. Okay, because I I know he got the really bad OEL deal, and the OEL contract is really bad considering how OEL plays now. He doesn't play up to a number one defenseman anymore. 
But he did offload, you know, the Jay Beagle contract, which was really bad. The Antoine Roussel contract that was really bad. The Louis Erickson contract that was really bad. So but he, those contracts he took, aren't really bad. When they have one year left, are you, they're really not that bad. They're not. I understand what you're saying, but money wise, it was bad. I mean, six million for Erickson, who was a healthy scratch more than half the season last year. So and and I and it, it I understand that he probably should have kept it and just dealt with it for one more year, but he's trying to save his job is what he's trying to do. So he did the right thing. Well, one to make the connection. Yeah, if, if he kick. has to be good this year and that's it, which honestly is likely, then right. yeah, I think he did all he could. But he he could have very well also. Well, the more likely option is that he screwed the Canucks for the next three or four years. And it it is a bad contract. I will give you that. But <laughs> but I I still I still think he did a, a decent a decent job considering what he had. He took the I mean, highest. He got. He took the he highest risk got, possible, but it has a very high reward too. I'll give him yeah. that. But I so, won't say he he did objectively good. And, and you know, people keep pointing out the whole fact that he got the uh, the really bad OEL contract. But what about Connor Garland? Connor Garland is a very capable top six forward, and he he kind of shown in uh in i almost said phoenix but it's not phoenix anymore it's arizona whatever in arizona and he did really well and i think uh, he he got him signed to a contract team friendly contract i think he makes like four five ish around there uh connor garland does and you can pencil him in for 20 goals especially if he's going to play with uh the top six that vancouver has vancouver's top six is not bad at all so i i still think that he did a good job but um, anyways, um, I, I was still really surprised at the amount of money that Hughes signed for. I was expecting way more and, uh, I, I'm glad they got it done for, for Vancouver's sake. So anyway, enough from Vancouver. Okay. Uh, this is the thing that I wanted to mention and, uh, that I forgot to last week. So we're going to mention it now. Um, the stars have two helmet sponsors for this upcoming season. So compared to the one last season, which was AT&T, they've got two. Um, they've got Energy Transfer, which is a company I've never heard of, who Love will be the <laughs> who, which will be the home helmet sponsor for the Stars. And then the away uh, helmet sponsor for the Stars will be 7-Eleven. And just so, think about the competitive advantage you get from having Energy Transfer as the home helmet sponsor. I mean, think of all the energy that's being transferred straight into those guys. Like, that's a huge advantage. Seven Eleven sponsor on the away, on the away. They're open so late. They're open twenty four seven in most places. Like, that's nice. So was that, huge, was that a dad joke? I huge swear, advantages for the stars. Huge advantages with these two huge. helmet sponsors. Okay. Okay, so- but actually. I like how last year we were told, oh, we got to have helmet sponsors because we lost revenue. And exactly what I said happened. Still have helmet sponsors. They're never going away. So, well, we told, we told, I told you this. I told the people that. Well, there you, you go, were... people. I was right. I'm just telling the people that I was right again. That way they'll listen to me. Right. But they're still, I mean, they're still I trying to stupid. recuperate. We're going to look so dumb with a stupid orange and green logo on our helmets. Okay, so as far as I understand, they're still going to use the color, the correct color scheme for the jerseys to match the, to, to, the for the helmet we'll to match see. the jersey, and they did, and, and they did that with the uh, with the AT and T logo, right? They didn't go with the blue for the AT and T logo, especially like when they were wearing these jerseys, the blackout jerseys. They uh, they used the the neon green or whatever it's called, the skyline green, whatever they call it, in on the helmet, so it still matched, and uh, so. I mean, do, do y'all really care about this whole helmet ad thing? Is is, is this still Pretty a big upset. deal for us? I don't like it. But Chris cares. I don't. Just because, yeah, like, it, if they're on a helmet, like, it's going to go to the jersey, and then you're going to pay the same price for a jersey that literally has a logo on the corner. Like, like I want to go to soccer jerseys. Like, a soccer jersey, you don't even know who the team is. Just looking at a large thing of a soccer jersey, you're like, "Oh, they're playing for Qatar Airways." That's weird. Like, <laughs> so stupid. That's who says Qatar? It's Qatar. Obviously, you know what soccer team that is. I'm a though. Texan. Who are you? <laughs> Bar- <laughs> <laughs> is it Barcelona? Oh, it is Barcelona. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, 
anyway, I, I, I'm not going to go into my long explanation again, but if the NHL is making money, we get hockey, so therefore I'm okay with it. That's how I feel about it. I don't like it, but money they're making money. hockey. Yeah, That's but not they, an issue. they've lost. They need to make money in order for there to be an, 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 a league. So make make money, I'm happy. Okay? Take my money. I want to see hockey. That's what it is. That's that, that's my long, long story short. They're making plenty of money. That's yeah. all I'm saying. Well, without having us having to pay for jerseys with logos on them, that's coming I, I, in the next I, five years. No, I no, five that's years. not that's true. That's not true, and I don't think that's going to happen because. Well, wait, I was right about this one, so wait well, for Well, Gary, it, no, we've already said that they're not going to have the logos on the retail jerseys if you hey, go and Siri, buy a jersey. Remind me in five years to check whether <laughs> there are logos on the jersey. <laughs> Uh, I have an Android hope. phone. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you have to say? Hey, Cortana? No. It's hey, Google. Uh, yeah, it's hey, Google. Is it Google? Hey, Google. Hey, hey Google. It doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> or they got turned it off. <laughs> it, it, any, anyways, I, I don't see that happening. That's not going to happen. It, it, it won't happen. And especially at least while Gary, Gary Bettman is the commissioner, because he's the one that really didn't want the ads on the jerseys and the helmets and stuff like that. But he only gave in because the all the owners were kind of pushing him and telling him, hey, we got to make money somehow. And he he's like, okay, fine, whatever. Because obviously if his bosses are telling him to do something, he's oh, yeah. going to do it. Gary Bettman, so, our savior. Okay. But whatever. In two ways. Okay. So I just want to mention that. Um, training camp surprises. Let's get into that a little bit. All right. So uh, the past couple of th- this past week, they've been trimming and trimming and trimming the roster even further. So they started with all the uh, the the PTO tryouts. Most of them are gone. I think they're all gone actually, and they were uh, released from their tryout. And then um, they released most of the junior kids to back to their respective clubs, whether that's in the OHL, WHL, across the seas, whatever. And uh, then I think they released two more today, if I remember correctly. I, I, I forgot exactly who it was. I'm not looking at the, the news release. Uh, I'll, I'll get that here in a second. But um, looking at the training camp roster, uh, let's just mention a couple of the players that have kind of really stood out in the fact that they're still on the training camp roster. Who, who, are, some of the, who are some of those players? Well, the... The biggest question mark is uh, this Frederick Karlstrom guy. Actually, it, it, that's not a big thing. I actually had to look that up, too. He actually got hurt, so he hasn't played since September 27th is, I think, what I saw. So that's why he's still technically on the roster. What? So, that doesn't make sense. Why wouldn't they just release him? Because they want to make sure he's healthy before they release him to his club. Oh, okay. So that, okay, that's okay. what it is. Okay. Good. Okay. I was wondering. I was like, what the heck? I don't even yeah, know what's going on. I, I said okay. the same thing. I was like, who is this guy? And I was like, but, I don't even remember him playing. Yeah. But the exciting why. one was Jacob Peterson? Pedersen? Peterson. I think it's Pedersen. It's got to be Pedersen. He's Swedish. <laughs> <laughs> is just that make, wrong? Just, just, tell just me I'm making wrong. assumptions. Just, just tell me I'm wrong. I think it's Peterson. I don't think it's Pedersen. That's All a right. lie. That's a lie. It's Pedersen. I think this is Peterson. All right. So. We'll, we'll see. But anyway. Uh, yeah, he got a lot better, uh, 2020, 2021 season in the Swedish hockey league. I checked out some of his stats. He had 33 points in 46 games. So pretty crazy, really good stats there. And then in the preseason, he's been on the score sheet all over the place. So one of the ones I'm actually kind of excited for, and I'm surprised I'm excited for it, and I mentioned this uh, in on social media one day, the fact that Riley Tufty is still in the lineup. I would have expected him to be sit, sent down already. Um, I, I don't know whether to, to root for the guy or or to expect him to go back to the AHL. I, I mean, I'm, I'm not getting my hopes up or anything that he's going to make the NHL roster because there's obviously it's, Bonus. There's a bunch of other veterans that have those spots, but I can't help f- but feel like I'm rooting for the guy to make the opening night roster. I'm rooting for 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 any guy who can overtake Michael Raffle who has any kind of offensive upside. 
<laughs> so I'm rooting for <laughs> Maverick Bork, Title Antria, Jacob Pedersen, and where'd he go? Where's the last one? Why can't I remember his name? Oh my goodness. No, it's it's only three. Okay, and uh, I was mentioning those two players that Riley were... Riley Tufty, that was the fourth one. Thank you. Yeah. So I was mentioning those two players that were... Uh, that were released today. It was uh, Riley Damiani was loaned to Texas, and so was Rhett Gardner. So I like Rhett, Rhett Gardner, but he's a bottom six kind of guy. Um, so glad Riley Gardner's out of here. Yeah, <sighs> I like. Arrow <Caro> next. <laughs> 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 and then uh, obviously Riley Damiani. I was kind of hoping he would make a spot, but you know maybe one year wouldn't one more year wouldn't hurt him in the AHL. Uh, shoot, maybe he'll. He'll expect a call up coming up in the next uh, couple of weeks, but um, guys, and I I forgot to mention this at the beginning, but we're less than a week away from NHL hockey, like that actually counts. You know what else we're less than a week away from? What? Four Star Caster Remark podcast in five nights. Oh gosh. (laughs) Let's go. (laughs) I know, right? I was looking at that. I'm like, oh geez, that's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. Lots of work for Ryan. Yeah, yeah, that's gonna be a lot of work for me. I'm gonna have to sit there and uh, produce all those episodes, but it'll be fun. It'll be fun, and uh, they won't be as long as uh, these weekly episodes that we've been doing over the past uh, couple of months. Unless one of us decides to rant for 20 minutes. Well, which which we've done before. I mean, yeah, they they can be, just not likely. (laughs) Well, there's been, I, I mean. Going back to some of the episodes that we've done, there's been some episodes, Chris, you know, like when we first started, we did it like 15 minutes because we were so ticked off <laughs> and we didn't know what else to talk about because it was like, it was like you know, one thing, goaltending or whatever. And then there were some times where we just went into absolute epic rants for like 40 minutes. So, I mean, this will be interesting to see how the season goes. And Yeah, in case you all don't know where we are bringing back the, the PGRs, so those are going to be happening after every single Stars game. Uh... I think we're going to try and do them a little bit faster so that maybe mm-hmm. y'all can listen to them before y'all go to sleep if y'all want to right. so be it, more mad yeah. <laughs> when you go to sleep. I don't know. Yeah, And, and I mean, they, they will go live just like these, like, like we've been doing every week. Oh, we're they'll, going live with those? Yeah, we'll go live after every single Stars game it is, as soon as we possibly can, as soon after it. So you can look for it on Twitter, uh, you know, Twitch, uh, Facebook, all, whatever. All the things. All the things. YouTube. So, okay, anyways, back to this training camp stuff. Um, so, we mentioned those four guys, okay? Uh, will you mention those four guys again, Chris, uh, for me? I, I yes, I will. There is real quick. Maverick Bork, Ty Delandria, uh, Jacob Petter Peterson, and Riley Tufty. <laughs> so, uh, let me get one from each of you. Who is most likely out of those four guys, if any of those four guys make it, to make the opening night roster? Delandria. Delandria. I, I think he already has. Like, I think he's on the NHL roster this season. I don't think he's playing in the AHL. Okay. And what what's his role on the team then if he's going to be... Uh... He, he's going to be on that third line that's going to be trying to be a scoring line this year. I mean, I, I, I know we've seen a lot of different line combinations, but it's just because it's preseason is what I'm still convinced of. I think Jamie Benn is still going to be the center on the third line, and I think we're going to be – it's going to be mainly Gurionov to start off with, and then we're just going to be throwing guys at the other forward spot and just seeing what sticks and see if we can get some goals from more deep lines. Right. Um, what I'm hoping for that third line is that it that like the line combination, we have a first line, and then we have like a 2A and then like a 2B, if that makes any sense. Right? Yeah. Does that make any sense? Yeah, that, yeah, that's, yeah. that's kind of I what I'm hoping – that's kind of what I'm hoping because we need we definitely needed a, a rejuvenation of what we viewed as our third line because our third line last year was uh, the FCC line and as great as they were defensively they couldn't score goals so yeah and our uh, fourth line wouldn't never played because they weren't AHL they weren't NHL players <laughs> right and that's not the case this year I mean that fourth line is going to have Roddick Fox on yeah. it that's yeah yeah this year our fourth, fourth line is going to be essentially the FCC line it's going to be. Fox Como and then whoever else, it'll either be Glenn Denning or Roffel probably. And that's gonna be a great shutdown line still, I think. I mean, I don't think I don't think Cogs was the only guy who could do what he did. I think he did his job well, but he I did think, his job very well. I'm gonna we're gonna miss him. I really think we're gonna miss him. I don't think so. I think Glenn Denning is gonna be 
better than Cogliano was because I think he can do the same kind of stuff and he can and win, win face offs. Yeah. Which I think is like I've said, I think that's undervalued in the NHL. But anyway, so Not that's by like, Jim Nil. It yeah, that's true. Jim Nil and uh Bones have, Bones have really put a priority on that, so but the other reason we need that third line to score is because we don't have one line that will always score every game, which is the biggest issue. Like, obviously, our biggest issue the past three years has been goal scoring. So, but we've only had two lines that could legitimately score every game, really, if you think about it. Okay, but if well, we can he... spread that out and have three, I feel like more chances to score. Okay, so random tangent here, okay? And this is just what I'm thinking because this popped into my brain as soon as you said that. There's a lot of teams in the NHL that rely on scoring from one line. Mm. And we and for the Stars, you don't want that, okay? So I'm thinking like Boston, for example. Well, I would take got, that, but we just we don't but, have the luxury. But like, like Boston doesn't need, has the one scoring line, and that's it. They've got Bergeron, Marshawn, and Pasternak, okay? That's the one line that scores in Boston. In Vegas, they've got one line that scores. Okay, they've got the the Pacioretty line. But they score and, at least one goal every game. Yeah, but still, if you're not getting depth scoring, especially in the playoffs, you're not going to win in the playoffs. And that's the one of the reasons why we went so deep in 2020 yeah. in the bubble playoffs. It's because we got scoring from freaking Yoel Kiviranta, right? Okay. Dare I mention dare I mention his name again to Colorado fans? <laughs> but and then speaking of Colorado, that's another line that only that's the only line that scores. You know, it's uh 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 Landeskog, Rantanen, and uh that gummit, I forgot uh shoot. Whoever's on the on the on the right the side of the line. The other guy. The other guy that's really good and shoots and scores and stuff. Yeah. And and but so I, I agree with that point. That those those teams aren't as likely to go deeper in the playoffs because they don't have that depth scoring. Those guys have to be on for two months straight for them to win the cup. So I agree with that. And we beat two of those teams. We beat mm-hmm. Vegas. We beat Colorado, we right? Beat Vegas handily. Okay. And then the same thing with we beat Vegas handily because their top line wasn't playing good. And that's all it took. And then, and, and the same thing with, uh, with Edmonton, right? Their biggest issue is they have nobody that can score with dry and McDavid. And they've tried putting them on separate lines, but when they put them on separate lines, there's nobody that can score the puck. Nobody. So they end up having to do like a, a death line with the two of them and then one other guy uh, to try and get goals in like the third period. And then they get, and then, you know, McDavid and Drysaddle get overplayed and yada, yada, yada. And, and I mean, they haven't had playoff success. McDavid has been in the league for almost six or seven years now and he has had no real playoff success that's crazy that's insane to me that is absolutely insane to me so the, i mean so you, you talk about you know not getting scoring from you know a line that's going to score every uh every game but i'd rather have it this way with the way that the stars have it right now at least the way that it's shaking out to be so any, anyways sorry random tangent on that but uh I, I thought that was a good discussion. i like it that's a good point so um so I think you're right to go back to the initial question. Delandria probably already has a spot. Who do I really want to make it? Tufty would be really cool on the fourth line. He's huge. He's enormous. He's six five. So oh no, excuse me, six six. He's I he's actually six six. So he's taller. He, we, he would be the replacement I'd for Jamie Alexiak. So, anyways, uh, and that's who I hope makes it. Who I think will make it will actually be Ty Delandria out of those four. And shoot, maybe two of the four make it. I don't know. I hope two of the four make it. Um, yeah, because that would mean that Raffle and Glendinning are out. Would that be the case? No, one of them just a healthy scratch. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, since it is still the off season. And that's still the biggest question among Stars fans, and we're still talking about it a month and a half later. Uh, we're like beating this dead horse. Um, but it's not, uh, it doesn't go, it, it keeps coming it, back, it, it doesn't go away. <laughs> dead horse. Um, okay, yeah, I'm just gonna ask the question, and dang it, Mike Kaika. <laughs> <laughs> um, he, he makes he asks the question, and it's a it's a legitimate question based off of the stats in the preseason, right? But it's just the preseason again. It's just the preseason, so you can't put too much into it. 
But the question that he puts forward is about the goaltending. Is Holtby, Braden Holtby, making a case to be the number one goaltender for the Dallas Stars in that, this offseason? Okay. My, and my just, hot take is it's not a question. He, right now, he he's is. the number one goaltender. Okay. So, so, so Chris says, so let me just throw you some stats out there. Okay. So just last game, he played the entire game. He's only played a game and a half, right? Okay, he played a half a game towards the beginning of the preseason, and he played last night, which we didn't get to see. Thanks a lot. I really wish we could see, even though it's uh, preseason hockey. But here's his stats just in the preseason. I I don't care. They're still really good, okay? 1.2 goals against average. That's insane. There's no way he's going to do that in in the, uh, the regular season. But again, it's really good. 954 save percentage. Again, amazingly good. A good would be 920, 925. That's insanely good. And that's only in 100 minutes of, again, preseason hockey. But does he make a, a good argument based off of his stats to be the number one goaltender, to be the starting goaltender on opening night? Yeah, he absolutely does. And I mean, that Blues team that he was playing against the other night. It wasn't they, like it was, you know, AHL guys. It was, no, there was it a was, lot of. It was most of their lineup, I'd say. It is like they, they had Tarasenko, they had Shin, they had Saad, they had all those guys. Like, was their defense. Was in? Was yeah. Buchnevich yep, in? Buchnevich yeah. was in. Yep. Connor or Ryan O'Reilly. Yeah. Uh, the only thing, the defense was a little bit less, but that's not who was shooting at him. <laughs> so. Well, Perenko was still playing, though. Right? Yeah, yeah, Perenko was still playing. Uh but still, that was like most of most of their starting roster was playing against him and he put up those numbers still. And and he looked good too. It wasn't just like he wasn't really being tested. He he looked really he looked really good. And honestly, Ottinger and Hudobin don't look good right now. They don't. And we're getting further and further along in the preseason, and it looks like Bishop is not going to be ready to play at the start of the season. No matter how much he wants to, it doesn't look like he's going to be able to. So, looks like that's it. Like, that's why I don't think it's a question. Like, unless he has a really bad game or one of the other two has a really good game, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. But I think to start the season, that's that's Holby's name is going to be said when we're talking about the starters for the first game. And... Literally four months ago, that would have been a crazy thing to say, <laughs> but that is the reality that we are in. So is Jim Nell a genius? Uh, right now he looks like it, right? Yeah. At the time he looked like an idiot. Now he looks like a genius. But he he, he only looks like a genius for a short period of time. Well, you have to see what he actually does when real games start happening. That's true. Of course, yeah, we gotta wait for we gotta wait Cause, for the season because this is gonna be very fluid situation yeah. for Agreed. at least the first quarter of the season until we so. figure out who who's actually going to play yeah. james it looked like you were going to say something sorry uh this just, just reading the article that mike Heike put out when he was talking i don't know if he was talking directly to holtby or holtby was talking to who or whatever you know but made me very excited the way that Holtby was wording things about the team. <laughs> I that that's probably just my stars fans mentality coming out and just being like <laughs> happy that someone someone's saying that the team is good, but it it sounded <laughs> right, but it sounded like he he felt this team was like good enough to go all the way with it. And I don't know if he didn't feel that way when he was with the Canucks or what, but... I think it's it, fair to say he didn't. Yeah. There's no way <laughs> but, he felt like that, yeah. But if that somehow had, like, an influence on the way he played and that's why he played so much worse in, in Vancouver, that's honestly really exciting. And, you know, that's a, that's a really interesting point, James, because that makes me think about the fact that he knows what it takes to win a Stanley Cup. He may not be the same player he was when he when uh, he won the cup in 2018 with uh, OV and the the Washington Capitals squad, but he understands what it takes to get there. So the 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 fact that he said that does make me excited as well. So that well, that's and, a really good point. And it's not like he's for sure a different player from that Stanley Cup winning team though. Like it, 
he had one bad season after the cup year. Obviously, he was not a, he was not nearly as good. But and then, then he, he played goes, behind a really crappy defense in Vancouver. And then he plays by behind a terrible team. So like maybe he had one bad year. Like that happens, and then people bounce back. Carey Price has had bad seasons, and he's been he's still one of the best goaltenders. And like we don't know. So maybe he is still an elite quality goalie, but he just hasn't had a chance to show it. So that's the hope at least, but <laughs> that's, that's why this is still the biggest question mark because there's so many variables and we have no answer no to any of them, but this and is, this at least, seems to be the answer. This is an indicator, at least one, one preseason game, <laughs> but we're taking one preseason game and we're trying to apply that really far. So, well, the, and again, let's mention, so you mentioned Ottinger and, and Dobby not looking well, so just throw some stats out there for you, okay? And why this article was even written in the first place, because the, the stats for the other two guys, are, that sucks, for lack of a better term. It, it legit sucks. Um, so Anton Hudobin, 5.15 goals against average. Holy crap, you can't give up five goals a game and expect to win. And well, at 8.57... That was off of... Two half games, yeah, right? I know, yeah, but still, still, you know, it's it's not good stats. You would expect something yeah. better. He still played. And then, <laughs> and then an eight fifty seven save percentage, which that's atrocious. And then Ottinger, who we were hoping would come out and, you know, push for the number one job, he hasn't, he hasn't looked good. And he, and I'm I'm not trying to rag on him because I want I want him to do well. I want him I want him to do well and be the number one goaltender. But he hasn't come out in preseason and said, you know, this is my net, Holtby getaway, Dobby getaway. Uh, he has a 2.86 goals against average and 9.8, excuse me, a 9.79 would be insane. Uh, a 8.79 save percentage. So neither one of those guys has above 100 save percentage or above a 2.5 goals against average. So, I mean, obviously this is why the article was written, because they're trying to find some sort of optimism in the in the crease. And Holby seems to be the answer, that, So at least so far, right? Yep, that's the only... Like I said, the reason we're so swayed so, so easily is because this is the only indication that we've had so far. So, yeah. With what we have, it looks like Holby's it, and there's not many more games before the season starts, so it looks like... He's going to be your starter right now. And, and the other thing that just makes me worried is the fact that when you when you look at the stats for Holtby last season, again, behind a terrible team, it wasn't much better. And he was the backup in in Vancouver. And, and maybe he needs that, that mantra of being the number one guy to play well. So for, for some guys, that just seems that's how they are. They, they got to be the number one guy in order to play well. But his, oh, excuse me, his record last year was just seven, eleven, and three, three sixty-seven goals against average, and eight eighty-nine save percentage. Did so, you say seven, eleven? Yes, I did. No pun He's intended. Going to be real good on the road. <laughs> <laughs> so, no pun intended. But it 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 just seems like, and the more that we talk about this, the more I freak out about the the goaltender situation. Right. Is it just Brain, me? Brain, Brain Holtby is going to be our starting goalie is what it looks like, and that's just crazy. Oh, man, yeah. <laughs> uh, that just worries me a ton. And uh, Well, I, I will be optimistic and say that Holtby will do well this season. And I, uh, Let's just say at the very least he will be better than he was last year in Vancouver. Yeah, no doubt about that. It's very safe to say. He can't be worse than that. So. All right. Um, speaking of guys who we hope have a really good season, Rope Hints. Um, Rope Hints, we're expecting a monster season out of him. Chris, you and I both have said that if there's any elite player right now for the Stars that would stick out, it would be Rope Hints. And, I mean, if if we expect him to be the mo- to have a monster season, like we've said, we've both said 80, 90 points, right, is what we're hoping for if he goes on a monster season. And that's just based off of what he plays, uh, how he played last season. Mm-hmm. But we, we got to ask these questions. Um, is Ropa Hens going to be 100% to start the season? And if he's not, how much is this going to affect his play at the beginning of the season? Uh, it, it won't affect him too much because he 
fought through it all last year. I know it's not the same thing, but he fought through an injury all last year. But it, it's definitely like it's gonna affect him enough to where I'm backpedaling off of the 80 90 points prediction now. So it's not good at all, and I'm it really upsets me. I mean, I know there's nothing we can do about it, but I, I, I hope he's at least good enough to play the start of the year and to start with the team and everybody goes out and we can see what what's happening because I don't want uh, what happened last year j- just was so frustrating I think well obviously for him first but for all stars fans it was just because of how good he was and he couldn't even go every night it was just like even if Ropa Hintz just plays every game last year maybe that puts us over the edge to where we get into the playoffs like just we, Ropa we, Hintz we being we win half of those 14 overtime losses, we're in the playoffs. Yeah. That's and, not even, okay, not even half. You could have won a quarter of them and we would have been in the playoffs. Yeah. And Robe Hens could have made a big difference in some of those games that we lost when he wasn't playing. So who knows? But I, yeah, I'm backpedaling off of the 80 90. I'm taking it down to 60 70 because of this. Uh, but I hope he, he, he at least can play at the start of the season. So the other thing that we've uh, we've also talked about recently and that we've seen is that uh, Bones wants to get him into a preseason game, and there's only two left, right? Yeah. So can we expect to see him in one of the preseason games? Because I, I think you you mentioned this that he only started practicing this week, right? Uh-huh. This is he only started practicing this week. So is he going to be? I mean, he knows the system and all that. He knows how Bones does stuff, but. The fact that he's, you know, probably a step behind most of the guys at training camp and, you know, of the other team on the ice and stuff like that, does that affect him if he doesn't play a preseason game? He just plays the first game of the season. Yeah, it definitely does, and that's why I'm backpedaling from the 80-90, just because he's it's gonna he's going to need even a few more games than the rest of the guys are when the season starts up to get back up to speed. So it's frustrating going from a season of injuries and we're still not away from that stupid season. This is, this is the last, no, that's not the last thing because we got Ben Bishop still too. Yep. So, but we're just assuming that he will probably never play again. Well, it, the articles At from this last point. week were showing so much optimism. I know and that then he and doesn't, and then he's not stop playing giving us hope. Like yeah. Like what's up with that? <laughs> just All stop. Stars media people at the same time. <laughs> like, don't tell us that. Man, that would be a huge Kickstarter for the Stars if Ben Bishop were able to play, though, right? They would play incredible in front of him, even if uh, even if they were out of, out of the playoffs, playoff picture or whatever. So uh, we'll see. Uh, James, uh, when's, our, when's our next games and stuff like that? What do we got coming up? Uh, game tomorrow against the Avs at 7, and then Saturday – against the Avs at 6. And then the first game of the season is October 14th against the Rangers at 6. I believe that's, yeah. is, that a, is that next Thursday? Yep. Yeah, uh, yeah that's, I think that's right. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah that's next Thursday. So we'll have uh, one more episode like this next week and then PGR the very next night. Mm-hmm. So we'll, we'll see that how works that works out great for our schedule. We got the preseason intro, and then we go straight into the game the next day. Man, yeah, that's gonna be awesome. I'm excited. It's gonna be great. Okay, uh, man, some of these Stella Stars news is kind of depressing. So let's get into who cares? Yay! Yay. Okay, uh, do we really want to talk about the first thing? You want to talk about the first thing, James or no, Chris? You really no. want to talk about Windows 11? No, I was just gonna I talk guess about we it did. if you no. really wanted to talk about Venom. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, right. well, let's just let's James, just get you in. Pick from one of the next two. Yeah, because because right. because these are. By the way, we. I just want to make known that these are James's ideas. My idea was to talk about Venom, and how awesome it was, and y'all don't even know what happens in Venom because you haven't freaking seen I, it yet. So. It's Venom. Uh, it, Venom is amazing. It, the second movie. I like and, Venom. Okay, just real quick. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do any spoiler alerts, okay? But the, for those of you that are listening, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's immense. It is immense, and how awesome this movie is. So you need to go and watch it. 
You right, have well, to. Since you talked about Venom, Windows 11 is great. We got rounded <laughs> corners. But go ahead and delete the chat feature off your taskbar. It's worthless. All right. Oh, man. Moving on. Okay. okay. All right, James. Which one are we doing first? We are doing... First, we're doing one. We're... we're we are doing the favorite bottled water. We're going to do favorite bottled water? Okay, we'll do that instead. I'm ready for this one. Okay, all right. All right, do you, you want to go back and forth, Chris? You just want to do we'll all three at once? back and forth. Back and forth. Okay, are we doing, are we going to do top three or are we just going to do one? Top three. Number top three. three. Number three is Ozarka. Ozarka, it's got that, it's a weird taste. I'll admit it. It's, it's different. But, like, if, if you're craving Ozarka, you have to go get Ozarka. There's no other water that tastes like Ozarka. It's amazing. Move along. Move along. Okay. Uh, I will. Can I say what the worst water is? Just sure. Just Honorable for mention. Go for it. Honorable mention. The worst water. Dasani. Oh, I everyone hate, hates Dasani. I hate Dasani water. It doesn't even taste like water. You're not like, unique for that. Moving on. I'm just mentioning it because it, it's good enough to be mentioned. Number three, Nestle. I love Nestle water. That's about That's it. That's weird. That's hate-filled water. <laughs> Look it up. <laughs> oh, English. goodness. Don't even start it. J All right, Chris. Number two. Number two. Ah, oh, man. This one's tough. Oh, wait. Can I, include, to... can I include flavored water? No. That, no. What are you talking about? That it's gum the it. Oh, fine. That is okay. oh, terrible. Number I'll two, have to do another Sam, honorable mention then. Sam's Club members mark water. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why he chose that. Because <laughs> it's the only one he can afford. <laughs> and he's got one, one right there. <laughs> it's freaking amazing. It's so good. Like, legitimately, most of the, like, big bottle water things, pretty pretty gross. Not that, not that great. But Sam's Club is some good, like, compared to Walmart and Target's brand, terrible. Members Mark. Way to oh, go. I don't man. know where they get it. It's probably from, like, Gary, Indiana or something, so... All right. All right, your turn. All right, my number two, I don't know if you've even ever heard of it before because it's not very popular or very well-known, but it's called Mountain Valley Spring Water. I think it's I have really heard of good. it. really good. Mountain Valley Off Spring Brando Water Zarka. is really good. So uh, I actually prefer that over Nestle even. All right, I'll save my number one. That's okay, awesome. all right, wait, honorable Zarka. mention if we're not including uh, flavored waters, but if you've never tried a Propel before, those things are We've amazing. Been, oh, that, that is, before. That is I not even love water. It's not propels. even close to water. Hey, it says water on the bottle. We talked oh about water bottles, so, okay? We, we just start bottling mention. Sprite and call it water. It's clear, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite water is Sprite. <laughs> Sprite. All right. And then, all right, go ahead. Number one. My, num my number one bottled water is smart water. If you have drinking smart water, you know the mouthfeel. It's soft, and you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you haven't had smart water, you don't understand. It. The water is soft. It's so. so what? It's soft. James, James. How can water be soft? James, that's that's like asking if water is wet. I know what you're saying when you say water is soft, but you might have just shot yourself in the foot. <laughs> Who's going to win? No. <laughs> oh. Even if you disagree with me, you're wrong. It's soft. <laughs> it's amazing. It's so good. I'll take the L on the scoreboard. I don't even want it. Oh, man. If you think smart water is not number one, ugh. Okay. Uh, my number one is not smart water. My number one is actually going to be Aquafina. I like Aquafina. It's my favorite. I don't know what it is about it. Oh, shut up. I'm right. You're wrong. Okay, and James is going to prove it by by choosing me as the winner for Who Cares segment tonight. So, Aquafina is the best tasting water, 100%. Okay? Very close, Mountain Water Valley, or Mountain Valley Spring Water. But Aquafina is just that much better. Oh, my. All right, James. Aquafina is Who? Like no, 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 we're done. We're done. No, no, no more arguing. No, where are you? You just know I'm about to no, eviscerate no. you. Aquafina <laughs> no, 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 no. is like a step above Dasani. Okay, like, okay. Barely. All right. All right. The, so, so for those of you that don't know, we decided to go ahead and start keeping score for who wins, uh, who cares, between me and Chris. And James is like the uh, the mediator in all Dude, of this. I'm going to start making up all the ideas now because this is a great idea. Okay. <laughs> this was <freaking> hilarious. <laughs> okay. R Ryan wins. Okay. Not just because James doesn't like smart water. Because Christian's water is worse. 
it's why why do you want soft water? I don't understand. It's soft. It's I good. Will buy soft water. <laughs> it feels soft. Never. If if I'm dying of dehydration, if I'm in a desert and I need water, I'm not drinking it. I'm what sorry. are you drinking? Oh Anything yeah, you gotta give back. no. Okay, now no, you gotta go at least give one. us one. Give us okay. your number one, yeah, because you didn't even do it. I, I'll be honest. Uh, I didn't come up with a list. But you don't need a list. But what's your number one? Well, what's water you normally drink? What's the water you normally drink? You want tap water. water? I'm drinking right now. <laughs> well, what is it? I don't even know what brand this is, but what is it? What does it say? Show it. It says gold. Gold, gold. emblem water, purified water. It's from CVS. But it is not the best. I promise. What's okay. the best? What's the best? Yeah. I actually really like great water value. <laughs> great, <laughs> great value, value water. Great value water, great water, you mean? Yeah. yeah. Great water value. Great water value. <laughs> I'm renaming it. That's his name now. Great water value. Okay. It's, it is what it, it is. It tastes good. You're welcome. Chris, Chris. It, Chris just went face palm on us for those of you uh, listening on the podcast side. <laughs> He, he he thinks we're both idiots now, that but I win. That's unbelievable. It is. Cur- I am changing it right now. The score is currently one to one. No smart water. No EOS. No Voss. I said no. Oh my gosh. No, no. Y'all smart water is smart water is good, but it's not in my top three. Oh it's probably like number goodness. four, or number five. So, anyways, this has uh, got to be the worst one that y'all have done. <laughs> this has got. You're just saying that because you lost. You're just saying that because you lost. No, because all four of y'all's picks were terrible. They were awful. You, you're the one that said water was soft. It's soft. James agrees with me. James <laughs> doesn't like it. I, I agree it's soft, but I don't like it. That makes it's no soft. sense whatsoever. Drink that makes smart water. Absolutely no sense. Drink smart water. Oh goodness. Okay. All right. We're gonna we're gonna sign Comment out for this evening. Smart water is soft. Yeah. Let us know who was right and. James is the official scorekeeper, so it is one to one. Uh, I will win next week, and I will be ahead. And yeah, so, and and I guess we'll do the, I guess we'll do the other one next time. That's gonna be really hard. The next week's who cares segment, because uh, the, there's so many to choose from. But in two ways, uh, you guys got anything else uh, you want to say before I do the sign off? Go, go download Windows 11. <laughs> Great success. <laughs> Great success, James. You got anything? Uh, hockey starts on Sunday. Happy times. Right. I'm, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. I'm super excited for that, and uh, we'll see how all this goes. So along with Christian and along with James, I'm Ryan, and you've been listening to Starcastic Remarks on the Hockey Podcast Network. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at Starcastic R, and like us on Facebook, and also follow us on Instagram and all the snapbooks and uh, all that other stuff. Uh, We will catch you guys again next week on uh, Wednesday night if you're doing the live stream or Thursday morning if you're listening on the podcast side. And then expect PGRs from us after every single game uh, this upcoming season. Uh, Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll catch you guys on the flip side. Have a good evening. the heck out of Bama.